Today we're going to be looking at standard RI 7.5. Analyze the structure an author uses to organize a text, including how the major sections contribute to the whole and to the development of ideas. So the main thing we're going to look at here is text structure. So let's look at our passage. Ooh, wrong one. Here we go. So um, when I think about text structure, I like to think about a carpenter. And when a carpenter builds a house, they have to get their materials they're going to use first. Well, the same thing is with an author. When an author is writing a text or a story, they have to have um, the structure, the way they're going to write the story, they, they develop that before they actually do any of their writing. And so that's where we get text structure. And it's, it determines how the story is written and the layout of the story. And it brings meaning to the story. So, and it, if you're familiar with, as we talked before, there are four different types. And actually, we talk about a fifth type as well. And the first type of structure is chronological. And chronological is, it's in the steps, in the time of order. We also sometimes call that sequential order. First, second, third. It's when the story is told in order of how it happens. Um, the second type is problem and solution. That's where you have a problem and a solution, how it's solved. Cause and effect, it shows how one event makes another event happen. Because of this, this is the effect. Um, and compare and contrast. Compare, you're looking at the similarities, how they're alike. Contrast, you're looking at the differences and seeing how um, a subject or two subjects, how they're alike and how they're different. One other one that we talk about um, in seventh grade that's not on this list is description. And description is when um, it's describing an object, a person, or a thing in detail. So those are our text structures. So very quickly, let's just look at this chart. And if you'll notice, this is a book, a chapter book. And if you look, look at just like chapter two, solving the problems of heredity. Now, if you'll notice, obviously, I'm going to think that's probably going to be problem and solution. Just that chapter is going to be about problem and solution. Look at chapter three, how DNA was discovered. Well, if they're going to tell me exactly how DNA was discovered, and they're going to tell me the process, then it could easily, it's probably going to be chronological order. They're going to tell how it happened in the order that it happened. So, let's look on, and we're going to look at a passage. And the, this passage is the discovery of DNA's structure. So let's look at it. They were too hardly modest, these two brass young scientists, who in 1953 declared that they had found the secret of life. So first of all, if they were hardly modest, that means they weren't modest. So this word right here is very important, brash. If they were brash, that means they were bold, they were um, confident, almost to the point of being cocky and arrogant. So they were very um, cocky about it. They were very um, arrogant scientists, and they thought they had discovered the secret of life. But James Watson and Francis Creek's claim was a valid one, one that had in fact discovered the structure of DNA, the chemical that encodes instructions for building and replicating almost all living things. Watson and Creek's discovery didn't come out of the blue. As early as 1943, Oswald Avery proved what had been suspected, that DNA carries genetic information, but no one knew how it worked. Then in 1951, at King's College in London, Rosalind Franklin and Maurice Wilkins were studying DNA. Wilkins and Franklin used X-ray diffraction as their main tool. Beaming X-rays through the molecule yielded a shadow picture of the molecule structure. So let's stop a minute and let's look at the question. We're trying to figure out so far what is the main text structure of this article. Now remember, it could be that there's four different types. It could be um, chronological, it could be compare and contrast, it could be cause and effect, or it could be problem and solution. So it has to be one of the four types. So it's very important that when you're looking at this, that you, and you're going to be given a list, and if you already haven't been given a list, of those key terms and key words that you look at when you're looking at text structure. So let's look for some of those key wordings, and let's look. I noticed dates, 1953, uh, 1943, and 1951. And I noticed that they're talking about the discovery of DNA, and it looks like they're telling me 
how it happened over a time frame. So just by those dates and from my knowledge of the central idea of what it's about, I can determine that so far the main structure is going to be chronological. So I would write chronological right here. Oop, I can get it to move over. So I'm just going to put chrono. Now, look at the central idea. The ideas of many scientists came together leading to the discovery of DNA structure. So we know that the structure is chronological. Well, what's the author's purpose in putting it in chronological? Well, first of all, it allows us to see the process of how they discovered um, of how they discovered the DNA. That's the main thing that it does for us. So let's look and finish the story. Referring to Franklin's x-ray image known as Exposure 51, James Watson is reported to have said, The instant I saw the picture, my mouth fell open and my pulse began to race. Shortly after, Watson and Crick made a crucial advance when they proposed that the DNA molecule was made up of two chains paired in such a way to form a double helix, like a spiral staircase. Now, I noticed the word um, crucial. That means it was a very important advancement that they discovered. For their work, Watson, Crick, and Wilkins received the Nobel Prize in 1962. Despite her contribution to the discovery of DNA's um, helical structure, Rosalind Franklin was not named a prize winner. She had died of cancer four years earlier at the age of 37. So let's look at this story. First of all, let's look at the close read. Underline the sentence that shows the most important idea in the first paragraph of this passage. So in this passage, what was pretty much the central idea looking at this ooh, I can move it over, section of the story? Well, pretty much the main thing I got from this was the fact they made a crucial uh, advance when they proposed the DNA was made up of two chains paired in such a way. To me, that's a major discovery. So that's the central idea in that section. So let's look at the question. How does the information in these paragraphs contribute to the central idea of the article? So let's look at some keywords here. How, that's the verb. They're wanting to know how. The information contributes. Well, you've got to know that contributes means how does it help it? How does it build on it? to the central idea. So how does this information help build the central idea? And we know it's all about the DNA, them, them discovering the DNA molecule. So let's look at our answer choices here. So it emphasizes why Franklin and Wilkins believed that the x-ray image would inspire other scientists. Well, we already said the whole article they keep mentioning is about um, discovering the DNA molecules and the structure of the DNA, does it really have anything to do? Is it all about x-ray? Mm -mm. It's nothing to do with the x-ray. It's all about them discovering the DNA molecule. So we know it's not A. Let's look at B. It explains the makeup of the DNA image known as exposure 51. Well, it talks about exposure 51. Does it explain exposure 51? No. So it didn't explain it up there. It just, if you go back to the story, it just mentioned it. It didn't do any explaining about it. In the first sentence, that's all they, they just stated it. So we know it's not A and we know it's not B. So we've already eliminated A, we've already eliminated B. Let's look at C. It proves the accuracy of the author's claim that the young scientists were quite brash. Well, I have two vocabulary words there, accuracy and brash. Accuracy means how accurate, how correct something is. So it's, it's proven that it was correct that the author's claim, what they were trying to prove, was that they were brash. Was the author, was the whole thing trying to prove that they were brash, which means they were um, kind of cocky, arrogant? Was that what it was all about? No. In fact, that's just a minor detail. That's not even, that's not a central idea of the story. So let's look at D. So we think it has to be D, but let's, let's make sure. It shows how the scientists depended on each other's work to make their final discovery. Well, let's look. Up here was the central idea. It was about them creating this DNA. Do they have to work together? Yes, they had each of the both the scientists, they had to depend on each other and they used each other's help and they were able to build their ideas 
and build on each other to come up with their discovery. So yes, it had to be D.